isn't it common sense that when talking about basket players and what it takes in making it into the NBA, is that being tall really helps? Do you think so too? Well, after watching this video, I think we'll be able to change your mind. The Houston Rockets are betting on the small ball. The tallest player in Houston's new rotation is newcomer Robert Covington, a 6'6 power forward. The small ball has already worked for the Heat of the Big Three or the Warriors death lineup. Russell Westbrook and James Harden will have more room on the court and be able to spread the ball around due to the Houston Rockets' small ball revolution. Do you want to know why? Well, we'll tell you, but at the end of the video, so make sure to stay around till then. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments that you did and we'll respond to your comment. The Houston Rockets are going all out in what could be a desperate attempt to push for what could be their final chance at winning an NBA championship before they ultimately have to blow it up and start with new players. The Harden era in Texas, where he would put up 40 plus points in a game and eventually gas out in the playoffs, hasn't worked like they want over the past few seasons. The new twist on the franchise's seemingly rushed philosophy will be measured against the most demanding yardstick, success or failure in winning an NBA title. The Rockets' small ball strategy has not appeared out of nowhere, as since the beginning of February, the team has played without a natural center in its usual rotation, with a positive result, five victories and only one defeat. The trade of Clint Capella, the only big player who had many minutes this season, before the closing of the NBA seasons has confirmed that the tests have taken effect. The plan is to play without natural pivots or players over 6 foot 5, something unthinkable a few years ago but increasingly common in the league. What was the best 5 in recent years, DeAntoni asked Monday in, in front of the Houston press. The lineup of death, with Draymond Green at 6'4", and it's an accurate reflection, as that Warriors team became the key element in the Bay Area franchise dynasty, the choice Steve Kerr used to decant any game. The lineup with Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green in their last championship run accumulated five consecutive visits to the NBA Finals. The choosing for the small ball is to make a clear statement of intent to the opponent. Whatever you do, I'll score more. Already intuitive during the last big three of LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh in Miami, the small ball lineup seeks speed, agility, and a blistering scoring pace above the physical, tactical, and painting game of the more classic basketball. At its best, the small ball becomes a game without defined positions, the last frontier left to slate basketball. Mike D'Antoni has the right weapons to launch himself into the adventure, with James Harden, 35.8 points on average, and the NBA's leading scorer and Russell Westbrook, 26.4 points per game, leading the way. With the inclusion of former Minnesota Timberwolves player Robert Covington, a 6'6 power forward, a three-pointer with scoring skills and good defense, called to cover the Rockets' paint positions with P.J. Tucker, Houston's lineup takes shape without a conventional five. Harden, Westbrook, Gordon, Covington, and Tucker is their championship bet. He's our big man, DeAntoni said of Covington after his good debut, 14 points and 8 rebounds against the Lakers. The victory over the Lakers has achieved two things. Firstly, it helps Moray and DeAntoni sell the experiment inside the dressing room, the coach himself acknowledged on Thursday. Secondly, it serves to reaffirm that they are not insane in any way, as they keep veteran Tyson Chandler and rookie Isaiah Hartenstein as emergency pawns for when things get bad. But more than likely, when the playoffs begin in a Western Conference featuring such giants as Anthony Davis, Nikola Jocic, and Rudy Gobert. For the moment, between the previous tests and the successful trial by fire against the Lakers lead by LeBron and Anthony Davis, a real beast of the inner game, the bet seems feasible. Houston's defense rating has remained virtually unchanged since the beginning of February, 110.7, that it had for the rest of the season, 109.5. The opponents that they've met along the way in that period were the Dallas Mavericks, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Charlotte Hornets, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Without the participation of Capella, in fact, the Rockets have a 10-1 record of the season, with Tucker at 5. The Texans have scored 9 points more per 100 possessions than with the Swiss center, according to data from the specialized website Cleaning the Glass. The offensive data reveals the positive change for the Rockets. Since changing their game plan in the game they lost on January 30th in Portland, their offensive rating has risen sharply, from 116.6 to 119.6 on average this season. 119.8 in their current run of four consecutive wins. Whoever we're going to go out there and play with, whatever four the coach decides, we're going to go with it. It doesn't matter who they are or how they play. It all depends on what we do, said PJ Tucker, key to the new scheme, to the media. 
If they get it in, the diminutive rockets can put more than one ring candidate in serious trouble, as they demonstrated in their 112 to 111 victory at the Staples Center in what was their first trial by fire. Not a minute with pivots and, as Mike Antony had predicted, the most efficient Russell Westbrook of the season, 41 points and averaging 33 in the last 10 games leading the team. Despite the few precedents, Houston's decision seems to be the best solution to win in the short term, the only goal they have pursued in recent years. The decision of the Houston Rockets to discard all the interns of their staff and bet on a small ball taken to the extreme, as PJ Tucker is the main reference, is the most striking of the season. D'Antoni's team has already played eight games with this type of lineup, and we believe that although it is still in the early days, we can already draw some interesting conclusions about the consequences of this decision, both positive and negative. Let's see. The first and most important thing to note since the implementation of the small ball is that it is working. The Rockets have won six of their eight games with that tactic, losing only to the Phoenix Suns and the Utah Jazz, thanks to a triple on the buzzer by Bojan Bogdanovic. In the meantime, they beat playoff teams such as the Los Angeles Lakers at the Staples Center, Dallas Mavericks, and Boston Celtics. Not bad for a team that had lost six of its last name games before that run. Can the improvement be directly attributed to the new team? Only time will tell, but in the meantime, at least the first signs are positive. If the Rockets weren't already an extremely perimeter team before they started playing without interns, their present has broken any meter. In the eight games of small ball, Houston averages almost 48 triples attempted per game, compared to 43.3 in the previous 47 games. Of course, the team has lost its presence in the picture. They are scoring only 43.3 points per game in that area, the 28th mark in that stretch of the campaign. How much did they score before? 47.6 triples, ranking 17th. True to their style, DeAntoni, Moray, and company have decided to double their bets. Why stay halfway through, instead of putting all their chips on what they are really convinced of? One of the particular data regarding the last eight games goes through the Rockets' defensive performance. They allowed 110.8 points per 100 possession, 10th best mark of the competition in that period, and just above what they were doing in the rest of the regular phase, 109.5 points. The sample is small, but for the moment, Houston has barely felt the drop on the defensive side, despite virtually no use of players above 6 feet. Where they have had a small setback is at the inside mark. They appear to be the 22nd team to receive the most points in the paint, 53 per commitment, up from the 51.1. The only points where the Rockets have really had a clear downturn is in the bouncing theme. Before small ball, they were the fifth best team on the boards, averaging 46.7 per game. What happened in the eight games since then? They've fallen to the bottom of the table, averaging only 38. The difference is remarkable and has taken them from one end to the other in a matter of days. So much so that their two best rebounders, James Harden, 8.1, and Russell Westbrook, 6.8. This is what usually happens when you lose a pivot who is down 13.8 rebounds per game, like Click Capella, and you replace him in the starting lineup with PJ Tucker. While Westbrook had been coming along at a very interesting level in recent weeks, playing without a classic pivot seems to have opened up all sorts of possibilities for him. Facing much more open and sloping perimeter defenses, the former Thunder can take advantage of his explosiveness to reach the rim with ease, finding almost no obstacles in his path. And he's doing it. Westbrook has averaged 31.8 points in 8 games, with a very good field goal percentage, 52%, and limited outside attempts, only 2.2 triples per game. But perhaps the most interesting data is the level of protagonism that the point guard is having. He is taking 25.8 shots per game against 20.3 of James Harden, besides registering a much higher percentage of use, 36.5% versus 33.3%. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out some of these videos that appear on the screen. Don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe down below.